Today on the Alma Music Sound Lab, we're going to be checking out the Yamaha SK30 Ensemble Synthesizer. It's pretty limited, but sound-wise, it's got a lot of punch. Stick around, let's check it out, and let's hear it in action. I'm Roland Bettis, this is the Alamo Music Sound Lab. Be sure to check us out online at alamomusic.com and hop on our YouTube channel and subscribe. We have a lot more videos coming up of these awesome synthesizers, classics and modern. Check us out. The Yamaha SK30 Ensemble Keyboard. What is this thing? It looks like a hybrid of a synthesizer and a home organ. It certainly is large and it's heavy at that, it's 50 pounds. Uh, they made this keyboard from about 1980 and a few, uh, a few years there on out. Um, and it didn't have a huge response when it first came out. More so because those that were looking for a synthesizer went to other types of traditional synthesizers. The benefit to this keyboard for some people that purchased it initially is that it offered more than just one thing, which was kind of rare back then. Uh, you had all kinds of different sections on the keyboard that did different uh, tasks. For example, the, this top line here is the solo synthesizer. This is a monophonic synthesizer that has limited functionality, but definitely has the heritage and the pedigree of a Yamaha mono synthesizer like the CS5 or CS10, for example. In this section right over, over here, we have the polysynth section. It's exactly that. You could play polyphonically on the keybed. And again, there are slight different ways to modify uh, its tone, for example, its filter its footage, uh, and every one of these little click switches is a different octave range, but it alternates between a sawtooth and a pulse wave. That's kind of interesting, and I'll demonstrate that later on in, uh, in the video. But very unique in, as far as what it can offer. Sonically, again, it's, it's a little bit uh, bold sounding, a little creamy sounding. Functionality-wise, it's a little limited, much like that solo synth section over here. But I think when you start to combine things together, you really see the benefits of why they made it so simple in each different section. Below the solo synthesizer, we have our organ section. Uh, the organ section is exactly that. You have your percussive section right over here, the octave range right over here for every draw bar, so to speak. Um, you do have some cool things like decay and sustain, which come in pretty handy as well. Uh, once again, pretty limited, but definitely has a really cool sound that really does emulate kind of like the B3 kind of thing. Uh, speaking of which, uh, there is an external tone cabinet connector on the back so that you can plug in this keyboard into a Leslie speaker. That's pretty cool. We've done it before here at the shop and it's just mind blowing. Uh, I should say though, you really, I don't know if you want to take a Leslie on the road with you, but if you do have one, it definitely connects perfectly to it and sounds really, really unique. Uh, in this section right over here, we have the vibrato section, which can be applied towards the polysynth section. And the vibrato is exactly that. It's kind of like an LFO. Really limited at that, once again, you have your depth, you have your speed, and your delay as to how it engages the LFO. Right over here on this section, we've got four different volume sliders, one for each one of the engines itself. This is kind of neat because some of these engines you might want to have subtly in the background when you're playing a pad or a couple chord structures and some other elements you might want to have to the forefront. Uh, it's a very fast way to kind of engage that and bring in different things at different levels at any given time. Pretty cool there. Over here we have our effects section, so to speak. You have the ensemble and tremolo mode. Tremolo kind of simulates what a Leslie would do, and the ensemble, again, is kind of like, well, a chorusy type of effect. These can be applied towards the polysynth section and the organ section, but not globally across the whole keyboard. Oh, uh, right here we have our solo synth section, which kind of engages what you want this solo synthesizer to be applied to. For example, if you click on manual bass, it could just be on the lower half, not engaged, it's all across the keybed. And you also have some cool things like um, the touch section. The touch is exactly that. You can engage uh, brilliance, as in aftertouch, vibrato with the aftertouch, and kind of like a modulation, the LFO, with aftertouch. Essentially, this is kind of an aftertouch section for this synthesizer on the top row. You also have something that's 
to me, not uh, developed nearly enough on this keyboard, but definitely one of the strongest suits of this keyboard. It's the string section. The string section has really just three presets, and that's kind of it. There's no way to modify or augment what it's doing or its tone. You're really just kind of stuck with what it is. And each one of these buttons is kind of like an octave range. So this would be the lower octave, an octave up, and an octave up from there. I think once you hear this keyboard in action, you're going to hear the benefits of having the string section in it. And although it's practically next to nothing on the editing scale, uh, it's still a, an extremely musical and amazing sound that adds to the whole concept of what this keyboard is. Okay, so what about the connectivity of this keyboard? On the back panel, you've got a lot of it. The main thing is, is that each section has its own output. For example, you've got organ out on a quarter inch jack, polysynth out on its own quarter jack, and the solo section on its own quarter jack. The cool thing about that is if you plug each one of those into a mixer, you can apply through an auxiliary send its own particular effect. Uh, for example, I like to do a delay on the mono synth. I like to do a Leslie simulator on the organ output. And on the polysynth, I might put a, a nice kind of lush, shimmery reverb. Um, when you combine all those things on a mixer and ha each have their own equalizer and its own effect, this keyboard does not sound like one keyboard. It sounds like so many things going on at the same time. I really, really do love the Yamaha put this, uh, the independent output stage on the back panel. You also, though, have a mixed output. So if you're doing a gig and you just want to make it easy and plug it into the board or, uh, or the PA system, no problem. You've got one jack to cover all of this on one output. Again, we talked about the Leslie output. Um, that's kind of cool if you have a Leslie with you. Most people don't, though, so we'll just kind of say that that's a cool benefit, but not really utilized in most cases. You also have uh, voltage control input and output, and you also have trigger in and output. You've got CV. This is kind of cool for incorporating these, this keyboard into your existing modular rig or anything that drives a MIDI to CV output for arpeggiating or sequencing. Uh, very cool for that. If you do want to sequence with it, this can be sequenced with the MIDI to CV converter. And Kenton makes a whole lot of those out there. You also have foot control. Lots of that. There's a foot control for the polysynth brilliance, foot control for the mixed volume of the overall, and a uh, foot controller for just the string volume itself. The cool thing about that is on the mixed volume, you can have the pedal going on uh, from zero to say 100% on the volume for all of it and the string volume with its own independent uh, pedal doing that exactly for that string section. You also have a portamento jack for a pedal and you also have a sustain pedal on here. Uh, all in all, a lot of connectivity and a lot of advanced connectivity for the era of what this keyboard was, seeing as how it wasn't really a synthesizer. Very cool and unique. So, as you can see, there wasn't a whole lot of talk about this keyboard because there's not a whole lot to do on the top panel. The best thing to do is just listen to it in action, and there's a lot of that coming up. Check it out.
I'm Roland Bettis. I hope you enjoy this SK30 synthesizer. I enjoy playing it for you and talking a little bit about it. Be sure to check us out online at alamomusic.com. Hop on the YouTube channel and subscribe. Lots of cool stuff coming up. Thanks again. <laughs>